Hey, what's up guys? Finally getting ready to build a building here. We got the excavator here. We're putting footings in. Well, we're gonna be putting footings in. We're digging those holes right now. I'm getting the driveway cored out for gravel so we can get concrete trucks back here, material trucks back here. This project is finally starting. I'm super excited. So let's get into this. All right, guys, day has come. We've got the excavator just showed up. We just kind of went over things real quickly. Got the John Deere 160 here. Got a bunch of stumps to pull out. Got a couple trees to push over. We're gonna double check and set grade. And then I think between that and they got a skid loader, we're gonna start ripping sod out, prepping for the driveway. Just, you know, just getting work done. I love it, it's, uh, it's exciting. I'll probably jump in my Kubota a little bit and help out as well. I'm not a sit around and watch type of guy. I'd rather be doing something. Dude, I do this all the time for everybody and it's so easy, but now this mine, I don't want to make up my mind, you know? Like I don't want to do something wrong. Right. <laughs> be right. I know, I know, man, I know, I know. All right, so got the excavator um, to drop off gravel today. So we were at site and finishing up a project so we can get here. And he basically tailgated a bunch of rock. So what do you think, Greg? It's a uh, second time at the site, but first time at the a site lot with than the last time. yes. Well, there's actually some footings and yeah. driveway and uh, a lot of dirt piles. And Greg brought his favorite tool is a gravel rake that actually somebody left at one of our job sites. Um, and, and then somebody ran over, I think a concrete guy ran over. So it's 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 definitely seen its time, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and spend a little bit of time because we just brought a bunch of stuff over and we're gonna go try to level this gravel out. And Greg is going to do what he loves, which is manual labor. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I was gonna do some bigger rock, like some one to three inch, but honestly, I don't like working with that. So I went with like just a regular road rock. I wonder how many things, how many loads do you think this was, Greg? Could we? Gravel? Yeah. Five, six? Yeah. I'm gonna need another probably 20. Oh, well, I, I'm not, you know, certified skid loader operator doing grade work. I mean, I think we did okay though. Now, granted, we didn't do any, any compression, any rolling. I really just spread out this gravel with my skid loader, drove over it. Uh, so we'll see how soft it is. Because I don't want to just thin it out for the heck of it, even though probably would make more sense to thin it out, flatten it, get it all filled in on the edges. But now it's flat. We can get back here. It's supposed to be here tomorrow to uh, hopefully start on these footings. Do you want to be the first one to drive on the driveway or? Dude, you ain't even, you ain't even... Pretty solid, dude. It's solid. How's it feel flatness? Let me know when you're done. Uh, it's a little crooked. I don't think so. You're, you're making some squeaking noise, dude. Yeah, it needs to get, uh, it needs to get flattened out a little bit. This is just a dang footing. We don't have to be perfect. But we're going to be. I got to, there we go. Well, unfortunately, we have determined that the elevation is great on this footing. It was dug really well to elevation height, but we've got some issues with the size of the actual trench and it being square, which I'm not really sure because I pulled multiple times tape measures and used the Stabila to check square when I laid the four corners. I'm just not sure if when it got dug, it got off and somebody wasn't paying attention. So. They're gonna figure it out. We're gonna get this working and hopefully we can make it work. Otherwise, we're gonna to have to bring the excavator back to do some overdig. All right, so guys, this is a perfect example of literally everything starts in the ground at layout. 
And if we would have had a perfect layout, maybe a perfect, and I'm not pushing blame because everything just happens sometimes and things go bad, but all of the layout at the beginning will ultimately lead to how the end of the project ends up. And you can start fudging things, but when you start fudging things in the ground, by the time you get to your roof, it's not good. Looks to me like you're, I mean, it's gonna be tight on the inside, ain't it? That's kind of hard, Well, we got a little bit of rain. It was around lunchtime, so concrete guys left to get materials. We went, got lunch, came back, rain stopped. Seems to be pretty dry, but I, I don't see the concrete guys coming back on a Friday afternoon. I don't know if it was me, I would want to get these footings poured because getting the footings poured allows you next day to come here to start setting your walls. But um, we spent a lot of time this morning trying to get things squared up and working inside of the confines of our trench for the walls because it was not perfect. Um, nothing ever is perfect in construction. You just do your best with what you got. But things are looking good and I could be proved wrong. They might show back up and get working again on this and pour these today, but I just doubt it. I assume they're looking at it like, mm, we'll come back Monday morning, finish up the footings, pour them, and then we'll be ready for walls. Problem is next week they're looking at more rain it looks like. So hopefully we can get this all done because I'm about two weeks, yeah, two weeks away from wanting to start building this thing. But I did get some more work done on my driveway. Four more loads of rock in here. I wanted to make sure that concrete trucks could get back here, get in sight and do what they need to do. I didn't want anybody being held up on account of me, the GC, and the site work. I also went ahead and cored out that little section to the uh, side. I figure I'm gonna want good space to work, you know, to be cutting materials up outside of the site. I don't wanna be working in mud. I can always use more gravel because I gotta bring the whole site up anyway and there's a bunch of gravel to go in it. So I'm gonna go ahead and probably clean up. I don't think anybody's coming back today. And we'll, we'll just keep this rolling into Monday when we get footings poured, hopefully, and then move on to walls. Well, this is exciting, guys. We're finally pouring some concrete. Now, I'm not good at just standing around, so this is actually really hard for me. I've asked them probably 100 times if I could, if I could help do something, but this is not my thing. So I'm just gonna let them do it. Uh, we've got a, a footing going in right now that's gonna probably be done here honestly in another hour they'll have this all poured and set and then tomorrow the goal is you know they got to get this set they got to get rebar in it for the walls but really not much going on here we're just gonna finish pouring this out they are gonna finish pouring this out now if you guys are curious uh, those of you that maybe haven't seen this process very often this is a spread footing this is a 20 inch wide footing we've got a two by eight as a form and I think you could probably get away with an 18 inch spread footing, but or it's all gonna depend on your engineering. I should say that. My concrete guy, he always does the footing a little bit bigger, goes with 20 inches. That way on an eight inch wall, he's got six inches of playroom on both sides. I will say, we did get that 180 out. We made sure that this thing was perfectly square. So hopefully when the walls get set on here, uh, those get checked for dimension and square. Everything is just perfect. And we're running right down the middle of this footing. Uh, that would obviously be the end goal. It's just nice to see something happening, man. It is getting late in the year. We've got three days of rain coming at the end of this week, so the next couple days are crucial to get as much of this done as possible. <laughs> the, the truck that this guy normally has is broken, and so they brought this other truck out, and I don't think it's been used in a while. It's literally a dinosaur. Hopefully we just get done with this pour. That's all I care about. Yeah. So one thing that Joel's doing here is putting this extra rebar on this location because we've got 28,000 pounds under max load figured in for our engineering on a column that's gonna sit right here. So just to add additional strength in the footing, uh, we're putting some extra rebar in. I guess you can't overdo it. No, no. This truss that's on this post right here uh -huh. is going to support all the trusses on this 24 foot section over here. They all die into it like a girder truss, oh, they do. but then also it's going to be completely open. So there's not going to be any post in the oh, middle. I, oh, well, that'd be cool. So it's got a, it's got an eight foot tall girder truss that goes post to post uh -huh. that the trusses up top sit on. And then the floor joists hang from max load. It's 28,000 pounds. What the engineer says, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I don't know. It's hard to quantify what that really means, you know? Right. I'm not an engineer.
All right, the site has finally dried out enough. It's still a little bit muddy, but we've got the excavator back. We're gonna go ahead and finish this trench dig right here. Now that we got some rock in here, they got these walls all done, forms are stripped, and my concrete guy is gonna be back probably in a few hours after this is dug, and we're gonna get this big porch that I've got laid out. We're gonna get the footings there, and then footings poured here on this wall. So hopefully by the end of this week, these walls will all be poured, and next week I can focus on getting all the insulation in, getting the backfill done. Whew. It's a little bit risky. We've got to do a little bit of overdig here because this trench is a little bit tight on this backside for this final wall. But that's all getting dug out for the porch anyway. So I've got I got grade set so that we can uh, we can hopefully get this done. And I just want to move forward. I want to start I want to start working on this thing. I wish, uh, I wish I was an excavator sometimes. Problem was that this side wall was too close to where the footings were and where the forms were gonna go that to strip it, because we're so much further out of the ground on this side, it's just the placement of the wall trench just was a little bit off for the footing. So I want to take some of that blame because I marked all the corners. I should have done what I did out here and I should have drew lines. So it would have been a, you know, a guarantee, but I can't do everybody's job, I guess, you know? I mean, you gotta, you gotta expect that your contractors are going to make sure it's right, but it's no big deal. We'll get this dug out. It'll be all good. 10 years from now, nobody will remember it. I will. I think it's just gonna be some hand digging. All right, now onto the porch. This ain't bad. I think that they'll be able to work this out. It ain't great, but it ain't great. So the lesson learned here is dig it all at once, spend the money, bring in a pump truck if you need it, and bring in a, uh, what do they call those, like a, I can't even think, uh, like a belt feed uh, conveyor. Okay, I'm sweating here, I'm working hard. A conveyor truck, just spend the money, do it. Then all this could have been dug, could have been all cleaned out of the way, and we're not back here. But I did get my wish. I wanted to be an excavator, and today I get to fulfill that dream. So we ended up just going ahead and digging this whole area out. It was too crumbly. We couldn't leave the island in the middle. Really, the only thing I was doing was trying to save money by not having to bring in, I don't know, seven more truckloads of rock is what I figured. But this will all have to be filled with rock, so we'll get some good fill in here. Um, this is gonna have a porch cap, so this gotta all be filled with rock. We can't just put the dirt back here. It's unfortunate, it's gonna cost me for sure. And uh, I'm anxious to see what that gravel bill is once it all gets done because you think about it, this whole area is probably 12, 14 feet wide. I'm only gonna lose eight inches of wall here, eight inches of wall here. The rest is all gotta be rock because I'm gonna have driveway out here, I'm gonna have cap here, I'm gonna have concrete floor in there. So it's gotta all be rock. It is what it is. I don't even know if this is necessary, but being that it's mine, uh, my thought is any loose dirt underneath where my footings are gonna go is compressible dirt. So as much as this I can get out, I'm thinking it's probably for the better. I don't know if a concrete contractor is gonna care too much or if they're just gonna say, ah, no big deal. But I'm not doing anything anyway right now. So might as well get all this out of here, make it nice and clean for the for the guys when they show up to do footings. I probably should throw that out there. 
Oh boy. These boulders are almost too big to even shovel. He just pulls that machine off the off the trailer, moves his wrist around a little bit, and now putting the machine back on the trailer. I bet he didn't break a sweat once. Maybe we do want to be excavators. I don't know. I'm still undecided. What the guys are doing now is they're getting the form set up for the footings. I figured since I'm doing this real quick, I get this out of the way so that the concrete truck can back up and they can get their you know forms in here later on. Let's just get this dirt out of the way. But while I'm doing that, I told him, hey, Greg's on the clock. So put him to work. He's got a good strong back and he can move wood like nobody's business. We just found out that there's about $2,000 in gravel. That doesn't cost, that doesn't, that doesn't take into effect the hauling cost. So I've got $2,000 in gravel probably just to fill back up this hole that we had to overdig for the porch. Maybe I should have done piers. <laughs> <sighs> we got everything cleaned out. We got this pile moved out. It actually doesn't look too bad around here. Hopefully we can get all this done before the next rain event. Concrete truck just showed up to finally pour the rest of my walls, porch walls, and the front wall. So I'm excited, and I don't ever get to be around for this, so I'm gonna hang out, take a watch. It's Saturday morning, why not? So this right here is a bulkhead for the door. So this is where my overhead door is gonna be. And basically what they've done is they take this two by, and they'll cut it to the height that the door needs a drop down so that the floor can be poured. And then they pour on both sides to the height they want and then they can come back in the middle. That way this doesn't get poured all the way to the top of the wall. Concrete is hard enough, firm enough that they basically just pour it to the height they want and then pour it taller. Like this will get poured flush with the wall. They're just letting it kind of firm up a little bit because it's going to settle down a little. I thought it was going to snap. Let's turn them over this way. Couldn't get this truck back any further. So, moving it around. Since this wall has dropped down, Joel's just got this little board made. So they can just use that board to basically just drag it all out, keeping it at the same height off of the form because the forms were all installed on a level footing. And then that ensures that that wall's low enough. And then this will get capped with a concrete cap after the fact. So now that they've got that all poured up there, they're gonna go ahead and set their rebar in. We got one row of rebar here on the top that'll be on that first set of ties, about eight inches down, just low enough so we're not hitting it when we go ahead and drill our Titan HD anchor bolts, which are six inch. And then once this hardens up a little bit, they'll go ahead and dig this out, kind of fill it up to the side. You know, that way it's not continually filling up because the concrete as it's curing here, it's still wet, so it'll kind of keep pushing in there. So they'll let that set for a little bit. And Mike here is just pushing that rebar down to that first set of ties. Figured might as well throw that concrete in the hole. That's less gravel I gotta buy. So now that I got the wall poured, they're gonna go through and they're gonna fine tune this sucker, make sure it's straight. So they got their string line set up and looks like they're just measuring an inch off the form. I mean, it don't have to be perfect, but obviously the straighter it is, the better it is for us. These other three walls turned out really nice. I really do like the aluminum forms. They really make a difference in the finish. I think the guys that are doing the work, they love them because they're lighter weight. Good Lord, have you ever lifted a wood form versus an aluminum? And look at that finish they leave. Really nice. So here's an example of a door knockout. So this is where a walk door is going to be. And so they've got it down about eight inches. I think that's eight inches. And my floor is actually going to be about here. I'm going to leave a two inch curb on my wall. You know, I didn't want a ton of concrete wall exposed on the inside. A lot of times guys will do four inches, 
because that's a thermal mass. Like yeah. the cold will just come in that concrete. So the higher I keep my floor, the more insulation I can get on the wall on the inside. And I think a better job uh, keeping this space warm in the winter or cool in the summer because there won't be as much concrete thermally bridging into the inside. So with that being said, what they'll do then is this floor will get poured all the way out to the edge. And I actually like it when they come out about another inch and a half. That way my door can set on it. And then there's also a little bit of concrete sticking out for the sill that sits down. That's kind of a nice thing to do that I've found. I'll show you that, you know, as we go, but look at these walls. They just look really nice. They do a good job. This is an 80 foot wall. Sucker is nice and straight. Concrete guys just left. We got the walls poured. Sun is shining. It's gonna hopefully dry out this site. I'm hoping that I will get at least a couple days, Monday and Tuesday, to get all of this. I'm not gonna get all of it backfilled. We're gonna go ahead and let these walls set up a little bit. Now I will be pouring a little bit of backfill on both sides of the walls as I go, so it's not gonna be a bad thing to backfill fairly early. But I do know these three walls back here, the three back walls, those have all been done now for almost two weeks because of the crappy weather that we've had. So that's where I will start. But of course, that's also where it's the wettest. So I'm gonna have to wait for it to dry out. So I've got all my foam. I can start backfilling in that area. I've got three loads of gravel in here, but I'm gonna need more gravel backed in here so that I can get over top of this wall next week and get to the inside. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to be dumping my gravel from the outside, which I can do. I'll just have to be very careful because there is a pretty big over dig on this back wall because we shifted this whole building kind of in the, in the trench this way to make it fit good but i'm just i'm i'm stoked man seeing these walls it's a big deal it's a big step it's a big milestone and it, it puts us this close to actually framing up rrhq 2.0 and i know i haven't shared with you guys or maybe i've shared with you the design maybe some of you have seen the design of this building but I'm, I'm in love, I can't wait. It's gonna be awesome. It's Saturday morning though. I got a birthday party to go to, so I'm gonna get out of here. You guys have a good one. Make sure if you guys are as excited as I am about this, hit that subscribe button, follow along with this build. I'm gonna do my best to do as good of a job as possible to share with you guys as much information as I can or that you guys you know, ask for. So definitely drop a comment down below if you guys wanna know something about the project. It's mine, I can tell you almost anything because I should know everything about it. Anyway, I'm gonna get out of here. You guys have a good one. See you later. Thanks a lot. And until next time.